Well, luckily what we have here. So Kuhn just sent down this Landsaver 4810 and uh, we just had to unhook the 4640, pull it off. So this is a nine shank chisel plow. Looks like a ripper, but uh, it is a chisel plow. And it's not gonna be going on the 4640. It's going to be going on the 8235R because the horsepower requirement for this um, for an 11 shank was made the 82 at the low end of the spectrum and i didn't believe that we'd be able to pull it fast enough um, so we opted for the nine shank so hopefully we can get both tractors running on chisels and get a lot done as far as tillage this harvest last year we kind of got cut off with the weather because harvest ran so late once they get it unloaded we're gonna have jason do give us a walk around on the unit um it, he guaranteed that this is a heck of a unit and there's no way the 46 would pull it so are we crazy for like wanting to try that though? Yeah. Theoretically, that's what I was just thinking. Fuck. Might leave it up for hooked up for a second, and take it out there. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's not gonna pull. A, it's interesting anyway. I'll just stop right there. It's good. It's not gonna what? Pull away? It's not gonna run away. <laughs> Does power shift? Two, I Partial. take out mom's yard and we're all in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Front wheel drive switch you can yeah, turn on. That's the, that, it makes one jam. That's the big difference. Yeah, it is honestly. Yeah. You you like I said, this this would be enough, but realistically the 235 will pull it a thousand times better. Right. What you're saying is for the awesome fact that the 46 has to pull it. Oh, that's I, what I was I thinking before it. we unhook it, we should you, try I, hooking I, it I up. Really and... So now we got the semi sent back out with the baler and the mower because it's the end of the year, not going to be needing them. So we're standing here with Jason. He is the territory manager uh, for Coon down in this area. So we're standing here looking at the Landsaver 4810. Want to tell us about it? I, yes. Yeah. So, so the 4810 Landsaver is our, uh, is one of our primary tillage tools. Uh, Kuhn Kraus, or the Kuhn crop production side of the world here. We have a full line of tillage tools, but the land saver would be our traditional uh, coulter chisel uh, machine, and it's gonna fit very, very nicely with, uh, with the practices you've been using. Um, this was a, a total redesign of a machine just a few years ago. Uh, looks a little different than your traditional, what you would call a soil saver, uh, with a much longer frame for, for much better uh, residue flow. Uh, it has a, a much heavier frame for uh, as we get into higher horsepower tractors, uh, higher operating speeds, uh, still being able to get that uh, good residue sizing and incorporation into the soil profile. What speed do you recommend? Uh, that we operate this. So, so the recommended uh, operating uh, speed is going to be somewhere between five and about six and a half. Okay. Uh, typically, I'm going to tell you that soil conditions are going to dictate uh, are going to dictate uh, how fast you can go. Um, but the big thing with the operating speed that we talk about uh, being able to promote the higher end is because our point load is a, is considerably higher than a lot of the competitors we deal with, and by having that higher point load, the shanks stay contacting the soil and we don't get that side hop as you get a little faster where the shanks are relieving and making the machine erratic in the field so having yeah. that higher point load it really stays in uh stays cut in very nicely with a coulter chisel traditionally people are going to look at at their machine and say well i run a twisted point or a twisted shovel and uh so we still offer a four inch twist a three inch twist we all also offer a straight point but this machine's equipped with our seven inch double k wing point and the reason that uh, this machine's equipped like that is i find that we get very very good performance out of this machine uh, or out of this point because we're going to be very similar to the three to the four inch twisted shovel 
shovel for residue incorporation, but we get very, very good fracture between the, uh, between the shanks, so we're getting a very good job of tillage. And the other reason that I go with this point is because it'll allow for excellent residue flow. Instead of throwing everything left or right, it's just going to the left and right of the shank, allowing for very, very consistent residue flow. Okay. And then the last part of that is, is this point will outwear a traditional four inch twisted, probably three to one. Yeah. So very, very good, uh, very, very good operational parameters, very, very good wear parameters, and it'll give you that, that, uh, that, that uptime that we like to promote. So. Okay, some nice large spring resets there. Yep, and that's what that's that's built to give us that two thousand pound point load. Awesome. So which is a static at the end, so it doesn't have to draft back at all to to preload those those uh, resets. Cool. So. All right, let's go to the front of the machine. Let's talk about the disc gangs up here because yeah. we've got large discs. Um, what happens if I hit a rock? So. This, this disc gang, we operate with constant hydraulic flow. So instead of just setting the position, we're gonna run constant flow, set it for a pressure so we have optimal disc uh, angle when it cuts in. So we're getting very, very good cutting. Now the secondary part of that is it also gives us a little bit of an accumulation mode. So when you do hit encounter a stone or obstruction, it will draft back and go over that obstruction as well as compression of the sea springs here. So we have very, very good rock protection uh, built within the, within the design and still going to give us great cutting to make sure that residue will flow through the machine. So what are these handles up here for? So the uh, the, the crank up here is our uh, single point depth control. The machine has a working uh, working depth from 6 inch to 12 inch. Uh, it's adjustable within that, so you just turn that crank to find whatever you're happy with. Uh, that That's a really nice feature for, for varying field conditions and, and terrain. Okay. Uh, the the uh, valve body that is on the front of this machine has to do with the gang angle. So we'll set the tractor for constant flow. It does not take much flow, maybe three gallon per minute from the tractor. And then we'll set that. Traditionally, I'll start at about 500 PSI, and then we'll go up or down as needed to, to make sure that we're getting the proper amount of cutting. Okay. So. Uh, the machine, one of the, one of the big differences on this machine, just looking at the front side of this is uh, the length. So we've got a nice long tongue to allow for tight turns on headlands without getting into the without getting into the hitch. Uh, the length of the the tongue and the rest of the machine also allow for really good balance. So when you're towing it down the road, it's not not bouncing and erratic. And then same thing with it in the field. That length gives us such good balance that the machine isn't rocking fore and aft or side to side. Okay. What's the working width on this? Working width on this machine is actually 12 feet. Okay. So we we have uh, nine shanks. Uh, they're on 16 inch spacing so we run, we run at a, a 12 foot working width on this machine all right what's the length of it <laughs> about 35 feet okay. tip to tail is about 35 feet on this machine so and the reason for that again is is to have that excellent residue flow when you get uh, to the ranks of uh of shanks they're not right next to the to the to the undercarriage so yep. with that traditional coulter chisel a lot of times you'll get that shovel that's throwing right at a tire it's creating some inconsistencies in the residue flow and it's also giving a little bit of a choke point so typically that's where you'll plug yep. this when the, that undercarriage goes back we have great great amount of room for residue to flow through the machine uh and, and stay very very stable in the field yep so. that's something we've experienced in the past we've gone from an extended frame uh, up to the one we've got now yep. and we often deal with plugging i mean if you don't keep your eyes on the unit for very long if you take your eyes off it for too long, uh, you look back and all of a sudden it's riding up on, off the off the tires and yeah, riding yeah. The, when you, when the you breeze, hear the tractor so. lug down <laughs> yeah. because hey, oh, hey we, we're we're dragging a little more stuff than we want. But, yep. But the combination of the of the hydraulic uh, positioning of the uh, the coulters, the good depth of cut there, the the stretch of the frame and allow for good residue flow, um, you're going to have a hard time plugging this machine. Uh, so when you're operating. It, we want to make sure that you're maximizing your, your hours in the seat. You know, it's all about uptime. So when, yep. when I say uptime, that's not plugging. We want to make sure that we've got good residue flow, good incorporation. And the, the second part of my uptime pitch is there's really no daily maintenance uh, points on this either. We have sealed bearings, we have hardened pins, hardened bushings. So when you fuel the tractor up, you put a little grease in the hitch, there's an articulating ball on the hitch, you put a little grease in that, do your walk around, check to make sure that everything looks good, and you go to the field and you work all day. Cool. So. Alrighty. Well, I can't wait to use this thing. 
I uh, definitely think it'll speed up tillage. It's one of the one of our choke points yep. during the fall is trying to get everything with harvest done before the first snow. So I want to tell us about the back of the unit here. Um, this is something that particularly piques my interest. <laughs> so what are these for? So this is our star wheel leveling system. Um, it is something that is unique to Kuhn Kraus, the, the Kuhn Crop Production uh, machines. So basically what this is, 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 is I like to promote it as a, uh, a rotary harrow. So as we're doing our, our sizing and our, and our tillage ahead of the machine, uh, a traditional coulter chisel is going to leave us really rough. You're going to have really uh, ha ta tall peaks and, and pretty deep valleys. It's a little more aggressive tillage in the spring of the year to get that, to get that proper seed bed made so by having a leveling attachment on here we're gonna we're gonna speed up the spring operations as well by by being able to reduce the amount of tillage that needs to be done so what we're gonna do is you'll see that there's there's multiple cylinders on this on this system but it's all it's a phasing system so the depth control is controlled on the far left uh, uh, cylinder there's a there's a color coded uh, I'm going to call it a cam for lack of a better better word. So we pick this position we want, we raise everything up and we lower it down. And once it compresses against that stop or that cam, it then stops the flow of everything else and then everything is nice and, and nice and level. Okay. And the way the soil works is when it comes back here, these are just going to kind of feather it off. We're not looking for incorporation. We're not looking for any aggressive tillage back here. It's purely a, a rotary harrow to help feather that top off for for uh, an enhanced uh, finishing in the spring of the year. Okay. So, so these are a, these are a nice option. I really, really do like this. This is the best leveling attachment we make for for these machines. I'm so. really looking forward to seeing how it does and whether we're going to need to follow it up, follow up with anything uh, in the spring. Typically, is that what you see guys do, following up with another? Typically, typically you will want to make a seed bed pass. Okay. Um, today's world, most people are, are trying to maximize the usage if they have a vertical tillage machine or, or some other type of machine. You know, if you want to make just one pass with a field cultivator, it should be ready to plant. Because uh, sometimes that, if you leave it very rough, sometimes it needs yep. multiple passes. That's what we've struggled with in the past, and I think that's one of our... One of our challenges today is to try to reduce the number of passes that we do do because in the past, I mean, it's not, it wasn't uncommon for us to do, you know, two passes before the yeah. planter on, with the desk. And to me, that's just too much time in the well, field. So every, every pass is an input yep. and, and, you know, we are in a commodity business. So the, the more your, the more inputs that you put in, the more it costs you to grow that commodity. So we, we definitely want to try to make it make, make the, as we make that pass, we want to make sure that we're doing the best job we can and not creating the next level of a problem. Yep. So, so the one thing that I'll say is these machines, this, this being a nine shank, uh, machine it's kind of on the lower end of this range so we go from seven shanks to 25 shanks so from the smaller end of the of the spectrum all the way to the large uh, large uh, broad acre growers that are they're covering thousands and thousands of acres these machines are really built to, to cover the acreage and and uh, just do a really nice job cool well i appreciate bringing it down here for us today and uh, i'm looking forward to using it i'll be sure to keep you updated and you know how it runs for us and uh I definitely think that it's going to be useful having it here. So we just set it up for the 46. The only thing that we got to do yet is hook up the hydraulics. Um, but we're talking about just kind of taking it out with the 46 to see how she pulls it. And uh, you guys will probably see that in a future video um, once we get the time to do that. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. But I expect this to go on the 82 full time once we're done with harvest to try to get as much tillage done as we can before the snow starts flying so thank you for bringing it down and uh you did a great job thank <laughs> you for uh giving us the walk around excellent anyway i got that's pretty much it for this video thanks for watching guys be sure to check out all of our other videos be sure to like comment and subscribe and be sure to follow us on facebook instagram twitter and snapchat all how farms work and with that we'll see you next time